I gotta get my crutches. Throw some deodorant in there. This? Let me see. Yes. Oh, We're running a play, um, and so Joe threw me the ball, and I felt the safety from remembering like the coverage. I felt the safety outside of me, so I wanted to get my move to open up the field because I knew everything was back behind me. And as soon as I put my foot in the ground, I felt like somebody kind of hit me. And then I was trying to run through it. And you can see on the film where I kind of stumbled. And then when I stumbled, I realized uh, my foot was flapping. I had no power. And I knew, it was, I knew my, my season was over. We, I was up in the suite watching the game with friends and family, and I kind of just sat there. Um, I started praying, and just my heart really broke for him. And this has the look of an awful ending, not only to the day, but possibly to a brilliant career. A wide range of respect all around the league, especially for the likes of Steve Smith. Right now, he is, he's distraught right now. I got a lot of support that I really just didn't anticipate. Getting hurt, it's like a funeral in which you, you, you're not dead, you get to see. What is your feeling about playing again? I don't know, I think, uh, you know, just kind of take my time, because that's all I have right now is time. You gonna be a football player when you grow up? Today is the best day of your life, believe Give it. Give me 18 years of daylight, that's all right. Greatest leader I've ever known. What a ride it's been! If you see this face, that means I score! Today's November 9th here in Charlotte. Getting ready for my Achilles surgery. And see, hopefully, works out good. That's the biggest thing that I've been thinking about. Will I get back to the way I was? If I'm a guy trying to decide, am I gonna play again or am I just gonna go find out what this real world is about? I've never had to really make that before. Just tell me your name and date of birth. Oh, uh, Steve Austin. She this makes sure we a, don't hit anything. This would be the perfect time of asking me what my top five corners would be. <laughs> well, You're not asked. responsible for anything okay. you say now that you've been drugged. No, yeah. we take full responsibility for you now. No more questions. That's right. That's right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think you're already there. I've seen you just a little bit. Okay. We'll All right. Bye, sweetie. All right, sweetie. Love you. I'll see you after. <laughs> Thank you. 2015 was supposed to be Steve Smith Sr.'s last year in the NFL. Me and my family decided uh, basically after this season, this is my last season. We just saw one of the 10 most prolific receivers in the history of this league see his day, his season, and his career end in the worst way imaginable. He's coming back. He ain't finished, he ain't going out like that. If anybody can come back from, from it, Steve Smith will, and he will come back from it. I didn't believe he would actually retire on an injury. Go back through Steve's whole career, he always had something to prove, and this was another opportunity for him to prove something. Steve Smith Sr. has spent his life fighting to prove himself. Try me if you want to, you'll go broke. Too small for the NFL. There he goes, Smith is gone. The rookie on his first touch as a professional, all the way for a touchdown. Just a kick returner. He throws it up for Steve Smith, and he's got it! Touchdown, Carolina! Won't be the same after an injury. Steve Smith coming off that leg injury. He's got a plate and eight screws in his lower leg right now. Can't adjust to a new quarterback. Newton lost the pass, Steve Smith, left side. Oh, oh, oh my And goodness. he's down at the one. Cut from the only team he'd known. Breaking news of the day, the decision by the Carolina Panthers to release the best player in franchise history, Steve Smith. Too old and washed up. Touchdown! Welcome to Baltimore, Steve Smith Sr. But fights leave scars and Steve Smith Sr. has plenty of those. 
happy to finish the game. Ice up, son. Ice up. It was never easy for Steve Smith Sr. And neither was the decision to return. It's one more comeback, a few more scars, and one more chance to prove them wrong. So I found out um, it was a double rupture. Basically, I tore it two different places. We didn't know, but uh, I slightly tore it in possibly June or May. So I was, so I've been playing with it, maybe slightly torn the whole year, and no, we didn't even know. It. No weight bearing first six weeks, so yeah, it's gonna be rough. Oh. Okay. You wanna sit up a little bit? Or are you gonna lay down? <sighs> Is it right here? Just like this. Scooch back a little bit. It's gonna require a lot of intense rehab because it's a ligament. Um, I think any rehab and any part of training, uh, you're gonna hit a part where you kind of feel like, why am I doing this? You start to question, you know, is it worth it, you know? Because ultimately, I want to play with my kids. I want to play with my grandkids. I want to teach them how to play ball. I want to teach Deuce how to tie his shoes and how to ride his bike, just like I taught Boston. And so those are the things that, um, that I want to be able to do. Steve has always felt like he had something to prove. You don't think I want the best? You better check your reference. He may not like being told he has a chip on his shoulder, but he does. I think he's he's that guy every year he's out to prove something. They don't call me the playmaker for nothing. It's not a chip, it's, it, it's a boulder. His greatest attribute is competitive arrogance. When he gets on the field, I am better than anybody on the field. And that's what makes him so great. My concern is just, is the guy in front of me. Honestly, I want your mom to be pissed off when she see on sports and I'm doing her son like dirt. That's what I want. There's people that look at me as like, he's a young football player with tattoos who's mad because he's short and he has a chip on the shoulder. And I say to those people, because you watch me in my workplace for two hours of the day, you don't know me. The guy who you think you're gonna run through, no chance. Breaks away, how did he do it? He's across midfield, he may score. A Houdini act by Steve Smith. The way I play ball, it's how I play ball. But that's not who I am, and that's not all of who I am. Don't hit the old lady. Don't hit her. What's up, man? How you doing? Good? Good to see you. How's the leg? It's getting there. I can, I can put weight on it uh, with crutches, but I'll be, I'll be hurting. All right, this, this is what we're doing. This is my man. Each kid gets a two hundred dollar gift card, Whoa. and then you get to take that. You take that gift card and uh, you shop. Hello. I found out that I was an angel tree kid. I hope your legs feel better. Oh, uh, it's all right. <laughs> the way I feel, I take one of your hand, take one of your Achilles. Though you gonna give me one? Which I don't know. You don't. I, like I thought this. I thought this was the, se the season of giving. 
When I commit and invest either in Baltimore or Charlotte, whoever it is, I'm not giving charity or helping it off or marking it off on the box. I was that kid. My family survived off other people's generosity. I'm from Los Angeles. I'm from the inner city. My mom was on food stamps, Section 8. Christmas was just another day for us. Where we lived, he was one of the younger kids, and he had to learn how to defend himself early. You can only defend a child so much till they start calling you a sissy. The next time he came in talking about somebody was bothering him, it's like you kick his butt or I kick yours. What's it to be? That environment was tough. That environment made me who I am. That environment taught me how to be resilient, how to not expect anything from anybody. It made me look at, if I'm gonna do something, I gotta do a full speed, because if I don't, that's what I go back to. The first step in Steve Smith's escape from LA was junior college. There, Stavon, as he was known at the time, earned a reputation and a Division I scholarship. I knew Coach Taylor at Santa Monica Junior College. We started talking about Steve, and he said, the kid needs some direction. Good kid, you know, nothing off the field problems. But on the field, he's going to compete. And so I said, okay, that's not a problem. He says, no, he's going to compete. And I said, okay. Yeah, I met Steve Smith in 99 at University of Utah. And he used to fight in practice all the time. The first week, Steve was at the University of Utah. It was just a bad day for him, bad day for me. So I kicked him off the field. So I walked down there toward him, and he had his helmet on, and he was crying. He said, Coach, this is what I got. I love football. And so I said, we can make this work. Broken tackles and records earned Smith attention from NFL scouts and one significant classmate. I met Angie, you know, I was walking down the hall and this glowing effect around me. And she saw me and she just was like, you know, she just kind of floated over to me. You know, so that's what happened. That's the answer I'm sticking with, too. It's really funny. Um, I thought he was quiet, kind of reserved. Um, I had told his mom after I met her that he wasn't cocky at all, and she laughed at me. I was like, really? <laughs> I was always used to just being by myself, and when she came into my life, it switched. So you've been around, obviously, your house for seven or however many straight days. Yeah. What's been the best part of that? Hanging out with dudes, hanging out with my wife. You know, this Thanksgiving was cool because it was the first time that I was, I was at Thanksgiving from the morning till there the whole time. I didn't have to go to work, any of that stuff, so that was really cool. I guess the thing I've struggled with is mainly is uh, you feel so helpless. You know, there's times I was grumpy and stuff because you just feel like someone has to do something for you all the time. And that made me feel real inadequate and, and just kind of like, I wanted to do stuff for myself, but I kind of struggled. It was tough to like rely on, I, I would always, Thank you, you know, sorry you gotta do all this stuff for me. Like, I was very apologetic. This is an injury that is a pretty significant injury. It's your Achilles tendon. So I've had that, well, as I say, the, the tunnel of depression. I think it's the medication, I think it's the pain. Um, you start to question a lot of things, and so uh, there's just parts where I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm straight, I don't wanna do this. Uh, and then there's days where I was like, let's trick, give it a try. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2001 NFL College Player Draft. So I'm on draft date, and first round goes terrible. Second round goes awful. And the third round comes and I'm in depressed zone. 
we look at the last pick. Steve Smith, another Ute, running Ute, going to, this one going to Carolina. Never even knew where North Carolina was, and that's just a fact. Didn't know who's on the squad, didn't know who played there. I think we had to pull out the map just to, you know, make sure we knew where it was. And so I get drafted, I come in, and then a guy taps me on the shoulder. I turn, turn George Seifert. George Seifert says, hey, I draft you. Don't f*** this up. And walks off. That was it. The rookie Smith from his seven yard line to the 20. Cutting outside, 30, there he goes. The rookie on his first touch as a professional, all the way for a touchdown. Big time, that's big time right there. As a rookie, Steve Smith excelled on special teams, totaling nearly 2,000 all-purpose yards and three return touchdowns. Smith still going 50, cuts inside at the 40, he's gonna score! The rookie takes it all the way! The young Panther was electric, but received few opportunities to spark the 1-15 in Carolina offense. I ran all training camp, and I was like, okay, man, we got a first week of practice. I didn't run no offense. I just did special teams. After practice, I was sitting on the field, and I was crying. Because I was like, man, I'm not even going to get a chance. I went to the Pro Bowl as a rookie, and one of our receiver coaches told me that the special teams guys are over there. These are receivers. But across the field, his special teams coach pushed him to force the issue with the receiver group. He said, show them that you could play wide out. No better place to show them is at the Pro Bowl with Pro Bowl quarterbacks. Go show them. And the coach who told me to go over there is now my head coach, John Harbaugh. He and I developed a pretty good relationship through the Pro Bowl because I was a special teams guy and he was a return guy. And uh, I just loved him. If you don't know who Steve Smith is, by the end of this game, you don't know who he is. I promise you that. In 2003, Steve Smith showed and told the world what he could do. Steve Smith caught it! Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, I'm knocking him down. 27? Hell, they might put my mom out there now. And I'm gonna beat her like a drum too. Touchdown Panthers, what a great move by Steve Smith. You hear me, man? I'm about to destroy 41-27. Smith topped 1,000 yards and helped lead Carolina to its first Super Bowl in a breakout postseason performance. They're now moving right to left as we start overtime quarter number two. The low pumps, he's got time, throws down. Bill Smith at the 45 to the 40. It's the next three. It's the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Woo. Touchdown, Steve Smith, 69 yards. And we are going to the NFC Championship game. Smith totaled over 400 yards and three touchdowns in the 2003 postseason and nearly led the Panthers to a Super Bowl victory. In the pocket he goes, downfield, he throws it up for Steve Smith, and he's got it! Touchdown, Carolina! Steve Smith beat Tyrone Poole down the far sideline! That moment was outstanding. That moment said I could play in this league. What a show Steve Smith has put on. The Panthers lost to the Patriots. It was a tough end to the 2003 season. And 2004 started off even worse. This is Smith, and he gets taken down from behind. After a gain of nine, and he is shaken up. He got, he got tackled from behind by Hannibal Navies. And the way that ta the way he went down, you could tell that he was in agony. To have the success he had in 03, for us to be so close to, to winning the Super Bowl and for him to, to play like he did, for him to go down, it was difficult for him. Who is that? What happened? Smith on his heart, man. A broken leg and a season lost. It was the first time Steve Smith would face a year of rehab, but it wouldn't be his last.
This is an injury that is really, it's a trying injury. So if it hurts this bad healing, how bad is it going to hurt to rehab it? Every morning I've gotten up and felt, is this going to get better? And there's some days it hasn't. Well, you are better than you were last week, but. Last week I would have quit. I'm serious. Last week I, I would have quit. Last week was a few times where I, you just felt like I was butting my head against a brick wall and I was getting no progress. Come on now. That isn't about age, that's just like, man, is this worth it? I'm kinda getting too old for this <sighs> But you gotta look at it, right now you gotta look at it a month at a time. I mean, Am I better today? Can I do more today than I could a month ago? Like, well, I'll be ready. Like, I want to be ready for camp, even though I may not do nothing in camp. I want to yeah. be ready. But I for think camp. you're going to be ready for camp. I think because the progress we made in the last few weeks makes me optimistic. 2016 training camp was five months away and an ambitious goal. Just one more obstacle to overcome. Suffering a broken leg in week one of the 2004 season, Steve Smith returned in 2005. He's got a plate and eight screws in his lower leg right now. He's got a touchdown, Carolina Panthers! Smith led the NFL in all three receiving categories. Catches, yards, and touchdowns. It's like one guy is just taking over this 100-yard piece of land out here. He ain't so up. I need to dock him, pay. You better double cover him, triple cover him. That's what I lead the lead right there. That's what I do best. Catch balls. Steve Smith is one of the top five players in this league. That man can't be stopped. You can't stop him. I'm serious. If you see this face, that means I score. I'll tell you this, he's, he's the best football player on this field today. If you see this face again, that means I scored often. In 2005, coming back from that injury, I accomplished that you cannot measure a man's ability to play this game based on the stature. Once again, Smith saved his best for the playoffs, scoring a touchdown in three straight road games. Hand off Smith on the reverse left side. He's got blockers out there. Ten. Smith to the five. Touchdown! Supposedly the best defense in the league, Steve Smith is just tearing them apart. 215 yards of catches. Dare I say, you see me again. Steve Smith, I mean, who could change a play Steve more than him? Steve just absolutely outran everybody. Talk about a game-changing player. And though the Panthers' title hopes ended in Seattle, 2005 was a year of professional and personal growth for Smith. With the birth of his third child, tributes to the family took many forms. The best part about this, win or lose, I go home, get hugs and kiss from my wife and my kids. Hey, That's for hey. my wife and kids. Hey, All I do make plays, block them, and go home, kiss my wife. And go make, uh, we gotta make some uh, brownie cookies, some brownies tonight after the game. Right. Win, lose, or draw, baby, we making brownies. Can I come over? And Steve Smith just changed the diaper on the football in the end zone, I guess. He was changing the baby. You should have seen Deuce's diaper last night. It was bad. <laughs> uh, we forgot to change him for a little while, like after nap. So he was soaking wet. <laughs> so it was like sagging. My kids are who I am. For some people, they see football of who I am, but my family is who I am. In our household, if you get called by your real name, you're in trouble. So, there's Peyton, calling Petey. So he's 18, going off to college. Bailey, BJ, 14, my, my princess, my girl. Boston, call him Bam, he's 10. That's my twin, 
Me and him are very similar. We think alike. We make same little gestures, little looks. And Deuce, Stevon Smith, Jr., 20 months. I'm S S Steve, the football player, but I'm dad. One, two. <laughs> Huh? Horse play with Steve Smith, the football player, not quite as fun. Steve Smith has led the league in being one of the nastiest competitors that I've seen. You don't want to mess with Steve Smith. I respected where he was coming from. He wasn't always right, but it's something that made him great. It's hard for someone to do the things that he does on a football field to all of a sudden pull back the reins and say, hey, you can't do that. Fights brought flags, but they also allowed Smith to get in the heads of his opponents. That's personal. That's a personal deal that Akeem Tlaib has with Steve Smith. There's no doubt about that because Steve, in this case, was right. And you see what Bill Belichick just did to Akeem Tlaib. Come over here and sit with me. What happened between you and Tlaib on the field early in the game? I don't know. You go ask him because he didn't finish the game. Ice up, son. Ice up. Unfortunately, Smith's fighting was not limited to opponents. In two separate incidents, he punched teammates, one time resulting in criminal charges. It was hard watching him struggle through it because there was not a whole lot I could say or do. You know, yeah, I had those moments where I wanted to <laughs> come out and say it's not who he is or he just made a mistake, but, you know, I'm not the type of person that's going to do that. I would say this. There is no justification on my actions. And I apologize for all the people that I hurt. I take full responsibility. And all I can say is I'm sorry. I was a young, immature young man. The edge that caused Steve Smith trouble was the same edge that defined his play. Steve just unloaded yeah. on Von Miller. And the trademark of that style was the patented Steve Smith stiff arm. He plays with a violence. When you see him catch what we call the smoke route and the DB try to tackle him and, and he punches him with his open hand in the chest and literally bench presses him and puts him on the ground, you realize how strong and how physical he was. That's that stiff arm again. I mean, he makes a small play with that stiff arm, makes it into a huge play. He runs a simple little six route and just stiff arms the mess out of Travis Daniels. Certain guys, I'll just stiff arm and move on. And there's other guys, I make sure I finish him to the ground. So I can feel his body go. <laughs> and now he knows he's going to get caught. Look at the stiff arm. Fights him off. And he's going to walk in from there. There's nothing more than breaking and feeling a guy's will leave his body and understanding that he surrenders. I like that. Steve Smith Sr. was not the only Raven coming back from an injury. Quarterback Joe Flacco tore his ACL in week 11 of the 2015 season. You know, me and Joe were in training camp and OTAs be rehabbing together. So the starting quarterback, one of the starting wide receivers, uh, we get to push each other. I, I hate to say it this way, but you know, misery loves company. The bond between receiver and quarterback has always been important to Steve Smith's career a trend that started with Jake Delhomme. I think Jake Delhomme was the greatest thing that ever happened to Steve Smith. Those two were so fun to be around because they both cared so much about winning. They both had, were such passionate players. You'd see them in a huddle sometimes yelling at each other, full on yelling, but it never felt like it disrupted the dynamic because that was their relationship. The best seasons of Smith's career came with Delhomme. Jake DeLome sets up and throws an absolute bullet. That's what I'm talking about. We expected so much out of each other 
we just thrived on it and we worked at it. So when it became time for a game, he knew I was going to go to him. Jake Lowe throws it right on a rope on the sideline with only Steve catch the ball. Throw it in there, let me get it, all right? No throw it back shoulder, throw it up, let me get it. And I knew vice versa that he was going to have my back no matter what. Jake throws long downfield, looking for Steve Smith, double coverage. Steve makes a great catch, and he's in for a score. How does he do it? Hey. Let's go. It's an honor to be on the field with you now. Another year, baby. Let's go. And when Delhomme's skills declined in his final year in Carolina, Smith went from demanding the ball to offering support. You hurt so much inside, you know, for him to come, put his own, hey, don't worry about it, I got, I, I got your back. But that's when you truly, you truly appreciate guys in, in, in tough times. Tough times came in 2010. Without his favorite quarterback, Smith had the worst year of his career. The Panthers finished 2-14 and 14 and secured the number one pick in the draft. With Cam Newton, Smith once again had a quarterback who could get him the ball. It's a touchdown! Steve Smith from Cameron, Jarrell Newton. Steve Smith, Cam Newton, touchdown. So many must think he's gone to heaven. Great job, leading us down there, all right? Great job. Good catch. Steve is an unbelievable dynamic player and has been doing it for so long and I respect that and I tip my hat on him. But the revival came at a cost. That was a tough dynamic between Cam and Steve. It frustrated Steve being with such a young quarterback who maybe didn't get all the terminology down right away, who would mess up his reads on a hot route, things like that. That's me, Smith. Steve had no patience for that. They rolled all the way to you. I know, but listen, we had a uh, rap again. Look at me, I learned. I was hot. No, listen to uh -huh. me. Look at me. And honestly, I feel like that hurt Cam's development a little bit because Steve was such an in-your-face character. He wanted to win now. Steve wasn't a rookie. Steve was getting into double-digit seasons, and he didn't want to wait to win for this young quarterback to develop. That's me, man. We bumped heads for the obvious reason. He's a first overall pick, and he was a star where he was. I was 30-something, 31 years old. I had three kids. So we were two people in two different phases of their life. Now, he's not on this list because I think we have a lot of people talking about him, but i got to get your take on Cam. Cam's, Cam's on the list. You don't want to talk about Cam? No. <laughs> the, reason I, I, the reason I don't want to talk about Cam is because so many people want to put so much on Cam. Yeah and just being kind of the big brother, he isn't there yet. Really, I think the, the organization felt like for Cam to flourish, they needed Steve to step down. In March of 2014, it was made official in a statement. Steve Smith was no longer a Panther. We really had no idea. And so I think it was just more of just the way it all came down. If you're gonna let me go, just let me know. You know, don't announce it to someone else. Emotionally, it was hard for everybody because of what he's done for this organization, the impact he's had in the community. He's the best Panther to step foot in Bank of America Stadium. But I think everybody understood that he probably needed a change. It was probably good for everybody. I'll always be a Carolina Panther. And the one thing I want to leave you is it's a new chapter in this book of my life, but there are phrases in this chapter that will carry on. And do you know what those phrases are, Frank? No, what's that? Ice up, son. <laughs> <laughs>
Steve Smith didn't want to stray far from home. Luckily, just a short flight away was an old friend. Stand next to my, my friend, my man, Steve Smith. As soon as it happened, I was on the phone uh, with this agent. We had coached in the Pro Bowl, and John had a real good feel for Steve. He and John would they would sit there man to man and say, John, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I would ask you to do for me. And John say, if you became a Raven, you'd be able to do that, to get a chance to see his family on a weekly basis. It was mainly Steve thinking about his family. You know, the whole thing was about him trying to figure out what would be best for his family. Hey. We off on Monday? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to surprise the family. I'm going to go home tomorrow. Go home tonight? Where's the plane at? No, because uh, I'll wake him up. <laughs> the, I can't wake up the baby. One of the things Coach Harbaugh told me, he said, look, if you can't be you, you, we don't want you here. We want you to be you. So I was like, oh, you're going to get you. I'm beat me. And in true Steve Smith fashion, there was one more factor in choosing a team. Every team that called... I looked at their schedule. I didn't know what week, but I knew the Panthers were on that schedule. In his first three games as a Raven, Smith totaled 290 yards and a touchdown. But week four was the game he was waiting for. If you think I can't play, you're going to find out week four. I was with the team doing some broadcasting, and I said, Smitty, how's it going to be tomorrow? And he said, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Once again, I felt like people underestimated me. They knew one guy on that team, his strengths and weaknesses. I knew that whole team. I knew the head coach's weakness. I knew the offense coordinator's weakness. I knew the defense coordinator's weakness. I knew everything. I knew the calls. I knew the cadence. I knew what time they pissed, so I knew how they were going to think. I'm not supposed to see him in a different uniform, so that was, that was hard for me. Being his coach, being his teammate, it was, it was difficult. I still talked to the guys on the team and found out that they felt that I would be emotionally unstable and I'd be all over the place. So when I went in there, I went in there strictly business. It was more of a psychological game for me. It was a, an opportunity to show my growth. Blacko looking to throw on third and short. Lost it far sideline. Tip caught Steve Smith Sr. And he's going to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown Raven. He's a happy man. The first fluke touchdown that he had. Oh man, it's going to be one of those days. He's got to think. This is my payback right here, buddy. God's on my side. They expected me to come out there and talk. So I said, nah, I'm not going to talk. I wanted to see if he was going to jump up. He didn't look at anybody. He didn't say anything. Flacco fumbles the snap, picks it up, and heaves it towards the end zone. Steve Smith Sr. is there. He makes the catch. To be able to do this against his former team, uh, you know, it's just unbelievable. It didn't surprise me one bit for that to happen because that's the way Steve is. This is a nail, him in a coffin. You're dead. Take your ass back to Carolina. Make sure you mow my lawn too while you're out there. Keep it clean for me. Uh, the highlight clips afterwards where he's nailing the coffin shut, talking about cutting the grass, and I'm just like, man, you're beautiful. You're just beautiful. But the last thing, uh, congratulations to Steve Smith. Steve! An old man playing a young man's game. Some of y'all gonna have to ice up. <laughs> Come on. Well, first of all, he wanted to race me because he thought, he was like, yeah, dad's hurt, so this is my chance. So I ran, and so I got him. They tried to take advantage of me because they thought I was wounded. We're here to move my oldest son and the, the University of DePaul and really watch him start to create his own path. Betty, you gotta pick Betty. Yeah. Great. I'll give you uh, my little pony. I'm like Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> As his father rehabbed for his final season, Peyton Smith began his collegiate career. 
accepting a soccer scholarship to DePaul. I gave football a shot and they're just like, ah, oh, that's Steve Smith's kid, don't worry about him. That just like, your first time playing football, that hits you. There wasn't like pressure from other people, but I just wanted to be successful at my own thing, so that was cool for me to make that next step, and I know it made him proud, so that was also cool. I'm proud of him for soccer, but I'm the most proud of him as a, as a student athlete. What's up, coach? Yeah, you Welcome. too. How you doing? Pretty good. All right. The cool part is I still have the opportunity to play football at an age where generally a lot of guys aren't doing. And then I get to do what every other father, every other family does. A couple more hours. Right? <laughs> right. He's, he's, he's our responsibility, right? It's like his last camp and it's my first, so that's pretty cool to think about. He's like ending his journey and I'm starting mine. So I really came back, not to really set any records, but more because this organization gave me an opportunity. And when I got hurt, I felt like I let those guys down in the locker room. So for me to come back and play is to show them that I am dependable and that they can depend on me. And to show you jackasses that at 37 years old, I can still play. Steve Smith's legacy is going to be maybe the greatest competitor in the game. The little guy that could run and knock people down. First ballot Hall of Famer. He's the greatest Panther that ever played here. Those that had a chance to touch him, to be a part of him, are better for it. One of the greats to ever play the game and one of the fiercest competitors I've ever been around. Great football player, great family man. We don't know what you can do anymore and you're losing a step and all those things and then he goes out there and kills it. No, Steve Smith Sr. wasn't going to end on an injury. He was determined to finish his career on his terms. Trash talking DBs. Things got heated between Steve Smith Sr. and rookie Jalen Ramsey. Stiff arming defenders. Jets a tackle, 30, get by a tackle, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Ravens! He is unbelievable. You talk about the injury he had a year ago to come back and make a play of that type is just absolutely unbelievable. In 2016, Steve Smith will likely eclipse 1,000 career receptions and already ranks among the top 10 leaders in career receiving yards. The numbers matter to him, but what matters more is how he finishes the final chapter of his football life. I've been rehabbing for nine months. I know exactly what's left. I'm gonna enjoy it the way I'm gonna enjoy it. So if you're not in the same jersey as me, I plan to rip you to shreds. And I intend to lay everything out, not for myself, but for the people who believe me and the people that invested in me 16 years ago. And I'm just gonna play ball.